but what is the best profile for Valorant? Well, honestly, there is no best, but I'll try to get you guys as much as I can to show you what we think is uh, our recommended profile for Valorant. And at the end of this video, I also share a couple of pro player profiles with you guys as well. So stay tuned for that. First off, if you don't want to hear me ramble about all kinds of settings and things, you can simply go to the description down below and copy over the profile code from the description. Then go to wootilde.io or go to the app of course and press on the import profile button on the left. And then simply copy paste the code over in there, press import and you have it imported. And now of course to use the actual profile, simply drag this profile to the top and boom, it is actually active. And now we're getting to our recommended profile for Valorant. And as you can see, uh, it's pretty similar to our recommended profile for CS2, Counter-Strike. And yes, that's correct because Counter-Strike and Valorant actually have pretty similar movement mechanics. That's why I didn't need to change a whole lot on this profile itself. So first off, our actuation point across the board is 1.2 millimeters. This is basically so you don't fat finger any keys on your keyboard. Of course, you can set this to 2.0 millimeters. That's all fine too. But 1.2 millimeters, the actuation is just a tiny bit faster than 2.0 millimeters. And further you can see on the WASD keys we have 0.4 millimeters of actuation point. You might be asking, why not 0.1? Well, 0.1 is just too sensitive. I tend to lean on my keys and I accidentally press in those keys as well if it's set to 0.1 millimeters. And you don't want that to happen. So 0.4 millimeters just gives you that extra little gift course you can tweak it see what you actually prefer maybe even 0.2 or 0.1 that's up to you and with 0.4 millimeters of actuation point you have to release the switch 3.6 millimeters all the way back to reset again and of course for strafing this isn't really ideal and that's why we also implemented rapid trigger on the WASD key so it instantaneously releases and resets the switch again for the really snappy raving movement and for the rapid trigger sensitivity i've set up a 0.2 millimeters sensitivity uh, why not 0.15 well when i hold down my wasd keys i tend to unintentionally i don't know why i can't hold in the wasd keys but sometimes unintentionally i just release it ever so slightly and that makes it already like jitter with rapid trigger on if uh, if i'm walking and that's not ideal. So that's why I've chosen a sensitivity of 0.2 millimeters, just to have a little bit more give. Uh, but of course, a sensitivity of 0.3 or even 0.5 millimeters is not really unreasonable. I just want it to be as low as possible for the, the, the snappiest feeling, but 0.5 millimeters is still pretty reasonable. Then we go over to the X button. This is going to be your ultimate ability. I don't want to fat finger the shit out of the X button, you know? Um, so that's why I've set up a 2.0 millimeter actuation point on the X. Of course, you can make this higher if you want to or lower if you want to, but 2.0 seems to be good. And then we're going to the left shift button, your slow walk button. And 2.8 millimeters on the left shift seems pretty drastic, but there's a reason for it. Activation is not really important for the slow walk. It's mostly the deactivation that is important for the slow walk. So. In advanced, of course, you already press your slow walk, your left shift, to not make any noise for the enemies. But once you get to a corner and you know there's gonna be an enemy around the corner, you wanna deactivate the slow walk as soon as possible. So you can just surprise them, be quick around the corner and tap them in ahead. So that's why 2.8 is set up. So it only takes 1.2 millimeters travel back to actually deactivate again. And of course, you can fiddle around with the setting and make it maybe even 3.5 millimeters. But I always felt that uh, when I'm holding down the shift key, I intentionally release it slightly. This makes my character just jitter around, which is not ideal. And then we go from the left shift key to your left control key. And the left control, the crouch button, is mostly important on activation, but not so much on the deactivation. So let's say you are in a gunfight. Someone's really close. You tried a few taps on the head, but it just didn't work out. Naturally, you just crouch down to change your head position. So 
the person has to change his aim and of course when you're crouching you become more accurate with shooting because of that you want to have the activation of your crouch button to be as fast as possible and that's why i've set it up to 1.0 millimeters of course you can put it this lower but just for the sake of not fat fingering your left control button, I have set it up to 1.0 millimeters. Then we go to the left windows button and 4.0 millimeters is a lot because you don't want to fat finger your windows button. It's the worst experience. 4.0 millimeters, it's still functional, but you just have to bottom down the switch. And further, we have remapped the caps lock to be set to FM1. So you have quick access to your FM1 layer with just one hand, so you can just reach with one hand to the FM1, FM2, FM3, FM3, 4, 5, 6, 7 button. So that's pretty nice and easy. And then as last, you can see in the bottom right corner, we have mod tab set up and that's pretty much just arrow keys. Um, because 60HG users don't have arrow keys really, then this is a nice way to still have arrow keys on a nice compact layout. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much our recommended profile. But now, of course, we also have a couple of pro players who sent over their profiles that we're actually going to check out right now. So let's get into it. But yeah, you can see the util being used, including kind of stage. But come, just the refight drops down from on high on heaven. A bit of a reflash as well. Repeat right down to it. The first one is Com, and Com has a actuation point across the board of 0.5 millimeters, which is pretty sensitive, and a actuation point of 0.1 millimeters on a WASD. He doesn't want to play around. He wants to be as fast as possible. My God! And also rapid trigger setup on WASD with a press sensitivity of 0.2 and release sensitivity of 0.4. And he has no teams, rep trigger, techie mode is on. Spacebar is set to 0.1 actuation. Damn, that's really snappy. Uh, I guess timing is essential on the spacebar and the jump. Uh, left shift button, 0.5 millimeters as well. Left control is also 0.5 millimeters to be as fast as possible, which is reasonable. All the settings further are pretty much the same. Yeah, that's calm. Okay, let's go to the next one. Well, it doesn't look too good for paper X. And then we go to Forsaken. Forsaken has an actuation point of 0.1 millimeters on the WASD. Again, it's really sensitive. And 2.0 on the F key. And across the board is 2.0 as well. So the F key or across the board doesn't make it a whole much different anyway. Rapid trigger is also across the board with a sensitivity of 0.15 millimeters. Doesn't have anything with the continuous rapid trigger or the separate press and release sensitivity. Techie mode is enabled, left control 2.0, left shift is also 2.0, and didn't do any remapping further really. No, I don't think so. No, FN layer seems to be pretty much the same. Okay. Dang. Ooh, take it to progressive space. Let's get that flash to the face. Aftershock can try to clear things out as well. Give him a little bit more protect, but he just went to an anthem. Gets dropped. Now another set walls, the three peak back, the four peak for Jing looking for the eighth, and he's got it! Jing has a again, my god, the Valorant profiles are wild. 0.1 millimeters again on the WASD and I assume as well Rapid Trigger. So Rapid Trigger is also set up on the WASD keys. 0.50 millimeters again, it's like you guys want the most sensitive settings. It's crazy. And for some reason, Jing also has the slash the backslash button to be rapid trigger enabled, which I wonder why. Maybe it's by accident, I have no clue. <laughs> and further, did he remap any buttons across the board? Also 2.0 millimeters of actuation. Pretty regular further, I guess. Yeah, nothing changed with these FN layers. It's all standard, okay. Five of the last six for the Masters Champions. Another duel, another win for Dirk, guys. He gets a second. He's gonna push them back. He tries to get up high. Is there anyone who dares show ahead? Dirk with three. Now you chant. Now you ask for it. Dirk looking for it all. He's gonna have to push past the Cosmic Divide. The fourth and the fifth. The faithful 
shall be rewarded! Fnatic takedowns there! And then we are getting to Derke. Derke, Derke, sorry if I'm butchering the name, has the same profile um, as Alvajer and Leo from Fnatic, I believe. Uh, sorry if I'm butchering your name. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Uh, I'm a Dutch man, okay, accuse me. Um, so the WSD keys, 0.2 millimeters of actuation point, which is pretty sensitive, but not as sensitive as the rest. So that's good. He has a little bit more gif. He, he, he is in the same boat as me. And across the board, a 0.4 millimeters of actuation point. So it's all pretty sensitive overall. Rapid Trigger also set up to WASD and for some reason as well on the backslash, which <laughs> I still wonder why that is. What's so essential on this key? I have no clue, but okay. X also on 2.0 millimeters. Uh, has four keys, so the spike is on 1.0 millimeters, so you don't fat finger it as well. And further, profile seems pretty regular overall. Tachyon mode, of course, also enabled. This rapid trigger is also enabled. And nothing more is remapped, I believe. No, it seems to be all pretty regular. Very scared that off the rail. Why would you be? Chronicle playing behind the smoke, and there's the opening. As they come around the corner, they're not oh, expecting to still be And he's got a small five! Chronicle. Chronicle actually has an actuation point across the board of 1.0 millimeters. And on the WSD keys, he has set up 0.2 millimeters. Rapid trigger is also set up only on the WSD keys. And he has a press and release sensitivity of 0.5 millimeters. And tachyon mode is also enabled. But further, I don't see any more settings which has been changed. No remaps, nothing at all. A fan layer one. No, doesn't seem to be something different. Okay, okay. The connection, at least with the phone line. Tens attempting to punish, just jiggling with it. The rifle in hand is doing the most. Already two dropped down. What is going to be the answer from crew here? Surely you back away if you refight this, but the spike is hard committed. Kesley is way ahead of the curve. The rest of the team cannot stand to it. Tens. Tens and tens is quite intense also with his sensitivity. WASD keys, 0.1 millimeter of actuation point. It's really sensitive and also rapid trigger on 0.50 millimeters. Damn, he's all about that speed. Yeah, further, continuous rapid trigger is also enabled. Tachyon mode is also enabled. And on the space bar, he set up an actuation point of 3.0 millimeters. And across the board, 1.0 millimeters of actuation point as well. Hey, I don't think he further changed anything, did he? And again, no, further it seems to be all the same. So that's pretty much Tense's profile. And that's pretty much all the profiles. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys found this helpful. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And of course, the profile codes are all listed in the description below. So simply copy them over, import them and use them and fill around with them. Play around with them, do whatever you like. And then I will see you guys in the next video again. Hey, goodbye.